I've had a request to do a video on the eccentric stool to press. So it looks like this. Obviously the eccentric stool to press is a stepping stone to the actual stool to press. So starting on the floor sitting in a straddle, pressing up to a straddle L position and then pressing up into handstand. Now when we look at the eccentric stool to press, I like to split it into three different components. So we have the eccentric press handstand, then we have the point from where the toes get close to the floor and the transition through to the straddle L, and then the straddle L itself. So first we have to assess where we're at on those different components. So number one, can you control the handstand down to tippy toes touching the floor, eccentric standard press handstand. So from this position, opening the legs out to straddle, slowly coming down, controlling, using the shoulders and the upper back until the tippy toes just touch the floor. Then the next part, can we go from the tippy toe part, slide through into a straddle L position and also hold the straddle L. So from the tiptoe position, slide through and hold the straddle L position. Now my straddle L seat isn't fantastic, I can't get my feet up that high. I can come through into a stall to press cold like I just did, but my toes drag a little bit. Ideally I'll be have some clearance. So how do we break down each of those components and work towards them and then put them together into the eccentric stall to press? So first of all we need to check what mobility we're dealing with. So normally the mobility that carries over best for the straddle press to handstand is the seated straddle good morning, or the pancake position and a forward fold. So like hamstring flexibility with adductors. So test it, have a seat in this position, see how close you can get down towards the floor. So a good test is to see if you can get one elbow down. If you can't get an elbow down, put a fist in the way. If you can get one elbow, go two elbows. If you can get two elbows, go forehead to fists, forehead to fist, forehead to the floor, nose to the floor, chin to the floor, chest to the floor. Oh, plenty of work. Chest to the floor, and then the last one, belly button to the floor. Now obviously the better you become at that, the easier this position is gonna be to get into. So if you need to increase that range, we need to be spending more time in that straddle position. I, I recommend that you spend time there daily. And I've got a couple of videos specifically on how you stretch and open up the hips to get into the deeper straddle position. Then we need to assess and see how controlled your straddle press is, the eccentric part. So video yourself from the side. Kick up to a freestanding handstand, open to your straddle, show control. And then see if you can articulate through the spine down till your toes touch the floor. So ideally you want to be able to do it without dropping or collapsing. So most people will be able to get into this straight position. So they'll be in a straight handstand. They'll open to their straddle, show control here. And it's this part that starts to get a bit hard for people so they'll start to drop through position so they might drop over the last part where ideally you would be able to push the back in the opposite direction bring the toes in as close as they need to be to compensate so to keep you balanced the whole time so if you need to work on that and slow it down spend more time and attention there we can just use a wall so kick up to a wall butt against the wall low back against the wall mid back upper back and come back down and again, I've got specific videos going into more detail on how you work the standard straddle press to handstand. And then you need to assess to see whether you've got a straddle L sit on the floor. So this can have a slight knee bend. You could start an easier way of getting into it. The way I had to always do it to start with was this position. And keep knees bent. Just try and lift up a little bit there. Ideally you'll be able to straighten the legs and hold that position. If you can't hold that position, we can elevate the hands. Now if I'm close to it, I could just elevate the hands on some yoga blocks or a pile of weight plates. Ideally a surface that you can slowly decrease. Or if you're much tighter, you'll need to elevate your feet up on something like a higher box like this. So easiest version would be on the corner of the box. Push up to that position with bent legs. Ideally it would be on the edge of the box. Then I could start to play with straightening the legs and doing holds there. So I would, I would work at hold it to around 15 to 30 seconds. Accumulate the time if you need to. So once we have a usable straddle L-sit position, 
we can play with working on that transition from the bottom of the straddle press through to the straddle LC. And using the box is a great way to do it to start because you can slow everything down. So I'm going to turn the hands out so it makes it a little bit easier to protract to push up into that position. I'm going to go up onto my toes and I'm just going to try and round my back a little bit like a tuck plunge, slide the toes, transition round to that straddle out position. Open as much as you can and then I can just decrease the slide. So I can get more into that straddle press position here, have lighter toes, step off the edge of the box, ideally nice and slow, find that hold position. Remember, it doesn't have to be the box. You could be on the yoga blocks or something lower now. Ideally, it would be as low as you could go where your toes just skim or just touch the floor, but you can still hold with some control. Then you can start to put it all together. So I can go into a straddle handstand on this box, come down through the straddle press so I lightly touch the toes on the knees to the box and then slide around and go through to that straddle L. So I'm in my handstand position, slowly come down. Toes touch the box if you need to. Make my transition more rounded controlled through that straddle position into your straddle hold. Now if I've got the flexibility but I still need a little bit of assistance on that transition from the bottom of the straddle press through to the straddle L, I can do the same thing as we've done with the box but I just use the floor. So I come down on the straddle press so light tippy toes on the floor now I make my transition to that straddle L. Now what most people will find is if they've got enough clearance, so either if they're using the boxes, the yoga blocks, or they've just got good flexibility, there's actually it will happen really fast and they'll end up sitting on their butt, so they won't catch the straddle L position. So this will happen really fast, and they'll end up in this position. So what normally happens there, because you're pulling so hard with the hip flexors to lift the legs as you come through, you keep the legs coming up, your hips are coming down and that momentum just carries you down, rolling, in, rolling you backwards or sitting you on your butt and throwing your legs up in the air. So what I would recommend you focus on is actually having your toes touch the floor and keep contact with the floor as you come through, and then having the toes or the heels still in contact with the floor until you actually come to a stop. And then the last few seconds you lift the toes without trying to lean backwards with the torso and that means you'll catch the shuttle L much easier. So as I come down, I'm going to make contact with the floor, keep contact, keep contact till this point. Now I lift the feet. So you just slow down that very end point just before you lift the toes up. And then over time you can just link it all together so you don't need to add the pauses in. So as you come down, you just follow the feet all the way through. And it's only to that last bit where you lift the feet up. And then you'll be able to put it all together without dropping backwards. And you can lift the toes up with the torso staying like it's leaning forwards. And it doesn't actually go backwards. And if you really struggle with that falling backwards, just raise the hands up a little bit higher so it gives you a little bit more time and allows you to keep the knees slightly bent and the feet a little bit lower. So if I do one on the stool here, I doubt you'd have two stools, this is a bit sketchy. So I come down to that last part, now I keep the knees bent. Now I lift the toes up. So I delay the lifting the toes up, I just keep the knees bent a little bit more. So test yourself, test yourself in the straight handstand, see how controlled you are, see how controlled you're in the straddle handstand, see how controlled you are in the eccentric straddle press so toes touch the floor. Use wall assist if you need to, to slow that down and get to the point where you can really control that. Assess yourself from that toe touch from the straddle press through to the straddle L, and then obviously check the straddle L, you can actually hold it. If you can't, just make each of those slightly easier and do more repetitions, more time in those positions. And if you can't do it, I definitely recommend you work the tuck press. So something from of a squatting position like this, pressing up from here and back down again, because this position here is more like a tuck planche where the hips are lower relative to the shoulders, which carries over really well to so that bottom position, that bottom transition into the straddle L position in the stool press. Also work your tuck handstand. So making sure that this is strong because that transition from there to there is very similar to that transition where we go from the 
straddle down through that eccentric press and start to bring the legs forwards. And if you don't have it, obviously get yourself a tuck planche, so work towards that tuck planche position. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions on the eccentric stall to press. I will put some links in the description for the full stall to press tutorials. Press to handstand and I've got a separate video on the straddle L-sit. Normal deal, thumbs up and subscribe would be appreciated and I'll speak to you next time. Thanks guys.